Here's something different. It's a neon license plate frame for your car. This dates back to the early to mid 1990s, back when these were a fad. A lot of people of custom modified cars would put these on to attract attention to them. And it not only attracted attention of the general public, but also of law enforcement, because in most states, these were illegal. Some car accessories, like the neon lights you see, could get you a ticket. Don Lopez tells us all about it in her Contact 8 investigation tonight. It's Friday night, and Mike McCandless makes sure his car is spotless, his music crystal clear, and look at this. This is a real attention grabber. And how about this Mike's neon light kit that goes under his car? Only one thing that burns Mike up. An officer pulled him over and said the neon light kit that goes around his license plate has got to go. I'm stuck with one frame, which is, you know, once you've taken it out of the package and used it, you can't send it back to them. You know, they won't take a refund. So you're basically, you know, you spent $50, $60 that you didn't need to spend. If you were to put any type of, um, uh, even a rim around it, that also is illegal. A lot of times... Officer Walter Haviland says the law just doesn't want you obstructing your license plate or making his job any harder. A lot of the neon covers actually do cover parts of the plate. It doesn't... Uh, lend to being able to read the plate very well. If I'm trying to stop a vehicle, obviously, and for officer safety, I want to be able to identify the vehicle. Neon light owners tell me if this is against the law, why are so many kits being sold in auto stores? Well, when I asked store owners that same very question, I was told, if there's a law on the books, there's always a way around it. You just don't want to obstruct the plate. You don't want to buy it. Tom Boyle like says he warns his customers of potential trouble before they buy. And that's what I tell them. You know, if you'll take it and mount it with your plate on top instead of having it, the tube on top, then that way it would be legal for you. You just can't have the direct light on there because it obstructs the plate. Officer Haviland verified that for me, and he says that's fine. But Mike, he's not taking any chances. He moved his neon light to the front of his car. He figures, why push the law? After all, you can see him coming and going. In High Point, Don Lopez, Fox 8, the Piedmont News Channel. So obviously I don't intend to put this on my car. This is strictly a show-and-tell piece. And this is a real neon sign. It's not an LED made to look like neon. It's an actual glass tube filled with neon gas. And it has a transformer in there that applies a high voltage to it. Probably somewhere around 2,000 volts. Which causes that gas to fluoresce and glow. Neon signs were once very common for general purpose signage for businesses because they were bright and colorful and they could be made in any shape or form and you could create animated displays with them. But over time they got associated with seedy establishments like casinos and bars and cheap motels and in fact some towns banned neon signs because they were considered to be an eyesore. <laughs> And in recent years, neon signs are rapidly disappearing due to their high cost of maintenance and they're prone to getting broken due to weather and vandalism. And nowadays, since the LED neon style signs have gotten so close to the original, it's just not worth getting real neon signs repaired anymore. Even in historic districts which are trying to keep the original look, they're replacing real neon with the LED neon signs. Here's a neon sign that's still in use. Unfortunately, it's at a bank drive through that's no longer in service. So there's actually a green open sign behind the red closed sign that's no longer ever going to be used. It'll just stay saying closed until it either breaks or they get rid of it. So hopefully this one's going to be working because it's still in its original packaging even though it looks rather beat up. Don't think this one has ever been taken out or used. It's by Quest Accessories. It's the Neon Street Lights Neon License Plate Frame. For some reason they needed to say Neon twice there. They show the warning of electric shock because this does have high voltage in it even though it runs on 12 volts. It's from 1993, Quest Industries, Miami, Florida, made in China. And like I said, these were illegal in most jurisdictions, so this has a big warning on it saying, this product is intended solely for the purposes of decorative and off-road use. Check laws and regulations in your state, county, and or municipality regarding installation and use of this product. 
And this one you can either have the entire neon tube exposed or you can put this shield on it which just shows little pinpoints through it. It says includes starlight glare shield for unique pinpoint neon effect around license plate. I just noticed this one says purple, so I guess instead of blue, it's gonna be more of a purple color. I removed the staples, so here we go for opening up the package for the first time in 29 years. These are just uh, holders to make sure it doesn't get damaged in the box. And there it is. Let's remove these uh, protective foam things, which are still flexible. Okay, so there's the neon license plate frame. There's the mounting hardware, which I will not be needing. And here's that starlight shield thing, which actually just, is that all it gets you? Because it looks like it also, yeah, they show little dots on the sides too, but it's completely blocked off on the sides. So that's all that does. And then this just runs on 12 volts DC, the little transformer is built into it. See what it says here. Use caution during installation. Always turn neon light off at filling stations and during refueling. Yeah, because you don't want high voltage sparks right next to gasoline. Oh here, transformer specifications. Input 9 to 14 volts DC. Output 1500 volts AC. So 1.5 kilovolts. 350 milliamps. I guess that's the input uh, current because if it was 350 milliamps at 1.5 kilovolts, that's a lot of current. So that's probably the input current. And it has a patent number. I'll have to look that up. So uh, there's a 1.5 kilovolt transformer in there. And otherwise, we just have to apply 12 volts DC and see if this thing works. I got my 12 volt lead acid battery and all I should have to do is connect the wires and it should light up like that. Oh, and it's instant response as soon as I connect it. It lights up bright purple. And I remember in the late 90s the Ford Explorer used the neon tube for its center high mount stoplight because that was before LED brake lights were common, so they used a neon tube. I don't know if the camera is doing justice to the purple color. It's kind of hard to photograph. I don't hear it humming, so it must use a switching power supply. Yeah, listen what happens when I put an AM radio next to it. Seems to be the strongest in this corner because it's even making the tuning LED light up. So this must be the corner where the circuitry is for the power supply is because obviously that's where the wire goes in. And if I connect an ammeter to the circuit, it just about pegs the meter on the 250 milliamp scale. So it's about 240 milliamps of current being drawn from the battery. And as for this thing obstructing the view of the license plate, Seems like in New Jersey it should be fine because it doesn't block either the letters or the state name. I don't think they care about blocking the state motto. It's just the letters and numbers and the state name that need to be visible. I looked up that patent number and it's from 1992 and that's actually for a shock absorber contained within the license plate frame to protect the glass neon tube from damage. For example, if your license plate is mounted on a trunk lid, you don't want the neon tube to get cracked when you slam your trunk closed. So it has a shock absorber built into the frame. So that's about it for the neon license plate frame from 1993. A fad of its time you don't really see anymore. 